The global financial landscape is undergoing a seismic shift from Japan's scary trade implosion to the U.S. grappling with inflation, record debt, and job losses. The old economic order seems to be crumbling all around us. Bitcoin crash, countries dumping U.S. reserves, they all underscore the growing distrust in traditional assets. Meanwhile, China's strategic moves, stockpiling gold, launching its own digital currency and expanding its trade with the global south, position it as a new economic powerhouse to be reckoned. With its cross-border interbank payment system gaining traction, could the dollar dominance be dying? And if so, what are China's CBDC and CIPS, and are they ready to take over? Let's talk about that today. Hi, hello, and welcome to my channel. My name is Fernando Muñoz, and just a quick reminder that I post all these videos in Spanish as well. So if you have somebody who doesn't understand English, you can give them the link in the title of this video so that they can watch it. Thank you. Let's get back to the video. Let's just start with an example that most people would be familiar with. Let's say shopping on Timu or, or Shane or whatever. Let's say Timu. When you buy something on Timu, your US dollar payment is held in escrow until your order arrives home. Once you're happy with the product, Timu sends the money in US dollars to Timu's cross-border payment processor who then deposits Chinese yuan into the seller's bank account. Timu's cross-border payment processor operate like other entities such as PayPal or Stripe to just change the money and give it to the seller. Unless the goods are in stock in warehouse in the US, products must be shipped from China, which is going to add to the time that your US dollars remain in escrow. During that time, exchange rates can fluctuate and affect the final amount that is received by the seller. Neither you nor Temo are actually taking risk, but that's important to note. So let us talk then about what are China's CIPS and the CBDC and how could they change things. As you can see, there is a lot of movement of money and steps that uh, take place behind that pay now button that you click. These are called cross-border transactions, but we are going to talk about those a little bit later for now. Let us talk a little bit about China's digital yuan. China's CBDC or central bank digital currency, it's a digital yuan currency, that's it. Important to understand that this is not crypto. It is just a digital version of actual money that is tied to the renminbi. And as such, a lot of follows rules and regulations uh, that cryptocurrencies do not. At the moment, it's only being used in the mainland and Hong Kong, but there are pretty advanced talks to expand its use into nearby countries like Singapore and some other ASEAN countries. In fact, global partners could come next if the U.S. economy continues its downward spiral. How does it work then? Well, just like Apple Pay or Samsung Pay in the West or Alipay and WeChat Pay here in China, you deposit or transfer cash to a financial entity, which then opens an account for you. The only difference is that this account can now store digital yuan instead of whatever local currency you use in your country. This means that next time that you buy something from a Chinese supplier or you get paid, from a contractor or employer in China, or if you send money to your family or relatives in the mainland or abroad, you could actually choose to use digital yuan. Does that mean that you will be buying your panini and your soil milk latte with digital yuan in Central Park tomorrow? Of course not. That's going to take some time. But consider that you already buy tons and tons of goods from China. I, I challenge you, go through your desk and find that Made in China sticker. I guarantee you that at least 50% of the things that you own are made in China. And those things you own have had to go through many intermediaries before getting to you. And that ends up increasing the price that you pay for those things or the cost in case that you're buying intermediate goods, which is another sphere where China tops the ranks. So imagine doing what you are already doing, but without having to convert currencies multiple times due to all these intermediaries who all take a cut. Instead, you're just buying, selling, sending, and receiving directly in RMB. For us living in China, we have been doing that for more than, I don't know, almost a decade now when WeChat Pay and Alipay started. The same is true for you using Apple Pay or whatever it is that you use in your countries. The challenge comes when you try to pay, send, or receive money abroad. In those cases, we've had to rely on PayPal or Stripe. 
They act as clearinghouses. They handle cross-border transactions. These are the entities that take a cut every single time you send money via PayPal or Stripe. And that sucks, doesn't it? That's actually what gave Elon Musk his billions. The billions and billions of tiny little pieces of transactions that he took from you. That's what made him a billionaire. In that sense, the next step is not too different. China has created its own cross-border transaction payment system called CIPS. For now, it operates pretty much like the others. It just moves mon money around the world. CIPS, or the Cross-Border Interbank Payment System, was started in 2015 and currently operates in over 1,530 direct and indirect participants, which includes banks and financial institutions in 115 countries and regions worldwide, which include banks in Asia, the European Union, Africa, Oceania, and North and South America. CIPS is recognized and used in the USA by several banks like um, Citigroup, JP Morgan, Chase, and Bank of America. Now, here's the kicker. CIPS deals only with yuan-denominated cross-border transactions. It settles and handles payments in yuan only. For transactions that involve currencies other than the yuan, such US dollar or euro or whatnot, we still need to stick to traditional payment systems like the SWIFT, uh, IBAN, or local clearing houses like well, PayPal and Stripe and whatnot. But things can be so much different and easier for the world of commerce and trade for you and me once CIPS is paired with the digital yuan. Because when both parties, the seller and the buyer, have digital yuan, then the price can be set instantly in RMB without the risk of exchange rates changing while the money is in escrow. You see the price in yuan on your app, you click and you pay the price in yuan. You already have yuan in your digital wallet. You are now operating at a completely different level of autonomy and speed. Let me add one more thing. You can trust it. The same way that 1.4 billion Chinese people and a few million foreigners who live in China trust our digital wallets. And why is that important in today's geopolitical picture? Well, for one, the U.S. controls messaging systems like the Swift and payment apps like PayPal and Stripe. We have all seen videos from content creators whose accounts have been blocked at the request of American authorities. Last year, I met a Ukrainian guy and his girlfriend with millions of subscribers on his YouTube channel and simply he cannot monetize because of sanctions. So all that can be avoided. It is also important because since the U.S. is insistent in treating the dollar as a weapon, it may open ways for countries in the global south to embrace de-dollarization. Now, it is key to understand one thing about de-dollarization. It does not mean to kill the U.S. dollar. It means to present the U.S. dollar with some competition as a global trade currency. So, be it a BRICS currency or the Chinese digital yuan, if you ask me, the digital yuan is more advanced or more ready than the BRICS. All these uh, currencies mean is competition for the U.S. dollar. That is it. The world runs in U.S. dollar. The billionaires and trillionaires of the world, the ones we don't even know the names of, the ones who know when to sell Apple stock right before the market wipes 2.9 trillion in one day. Those are the people who operate in U.S. dollars. They will protect the U.S. dollar from ceasing to exist, from collapsing or imploding until a better alternative appears. The fact that Trump has backed crypto uh, was a little cryptic, in it. <laughs> Do remember, those people can afford the losses or the fluctuations involved in these headwinds. But can you? Can the regular person do that? You must understand here that China is not out here seeking to kill the U.S. dollar, but China, like the rest of the world, is worried about the irresponsible handling of the U.S. dollar. They have vision. They have foresight that has served them very well as a civilization for 5,000 years. And as such, what they're doing right now is building the safety net that global trade will need. 
And if at one point it is not needed, at least some competition will emerge. I guarantee you that 88% of the world that is not the G7 would welcome an alternative that is cheaper, faster, and more reliable than the US dollar and its existing cross-border transaction options, even if the US doesn't like it. Check out this guy. All right, friends, thank you very much for watching. See you next week. Now, remember, if you're interested in this kind of topic, make sure to hit the subscribe button and hit the bell button to be notified whenever there is a new video out. And if you want to support the work that I do, there's a QR code that you can use here in China or a link in the description to buy me a cup of coffee. Until I see you again, take it easy and bye for now.